What up? Okay, welcome to episode one of Rants and Randomness. I am so excited. Yay! Okay, this episode, I'm, I'm really, really geeked because I'm uh, having my first guest, who is Unique Jones Gibson of Because of Them We Can. I'll be ranting about a movie that has blown the world away. I'll be talking about love. I'll be just having a good time with y'all. Excited to have you. And shout out to Chicago Recording Company, where I'm recording this, so it sounds highly official. And of course, Sav Media for producing this. You know, honestly, I feel like this is the dream team. You know, we can make magic happen. So if I sound highly official, this is why. All right. Uh, yeah. So this is long t- long time coming. I actually used to have a podcast back in the day called uh, Ratchet and the Geek. And by back in the day, I mean like four years ago. It was with my friend Scott Hanselman, and we used to talk about tech and television, and we had a good time. But rants and randomness is here. So hopefully, you'll be joining me every episode. Uh, yeah. Let's just dive right in. I think right now. Um, I think the world needs uh, good things, things that make us feel good. And I think one thing that happened this week that I have to share is how Love Nation came through. So Love Nation is a name of the people who read my blog. They voted on this name about three years ago. And uh, one thing that I did recently, I posted about how I have five copies of my book just laying around my house. So I was going to the post office and I posted the first five people who messaged me um, can get a copy of my book sent to them. And about 20 people messaged me within five minutes. The first five people, I told them to send me their address so I can mail them these books. About 15 minutes after I posted it, somebody else, and I said, you know, all the five books are gone. Somebody in my comment section goes, hey, um, I would like to buy two books for people who didn't get into, um, into, into the five-book thing in time. And she proceeded to order two of my books to send to other members of Love Nation. And then somebody else came behind her and said, I want to order three books for somebody too. Y'all, there's hope in the world. I know sometimes things are rough. But there's some good people. There's some love on the Internet. There's actually good spaces to exist. So I just wanted to share that in case you need to pick her up or, okay, because things are rough. Anywho, so today's rant of the week. There's never a shortage of things to rant about. But as you know, Valentine's Day just passed by. It's an interesting day because I feel like there's two types of people. There's a people who are happy in relationships, who... On Valentine's Day, it is their time to proclaim and shout from the rooftops how amazing their relationships are. And then there are the people who are single, who Valentine's Day is a reminder of how single they are. Both parties are very loud on social media on Valentine's Day. So the relationship people are the folks who are getting flowers and chocolates and trips to Peru and baths drawn for them. I feel like people spend their time online to be like, let me make sure I rub it in for the people who don't know that I got a boo. I'm going to share all this stuff for the whole day. Meanwhile, they're the people who were like, dang, I guess today's me by myself. I'm going to show myself love. You know, I have love for both parties, but it's fascinating because I end up spending half the day on Valentine's Day, just reading social media to see either how happy people are or how butthurt folks are. And it just reminds me of how people just perform love online. Now, if you know me, if you know my work, I am open about a lot of things. I'm open about my career, about even going to therapy. But the thing that I never talk about online is my relationship, my relationship status, my relationship issues, my like who I'm dating or not dating, I have basically owned the motto of real G's move in silence like lasagna since Facebook started in 2004 and I was on it. So my whole thing is it's important to keep certain spaces of my life sacred even as others are public. So I choose not to share all my business online. And that makes people assume certain things. That was like a whole thread about what my sexuality was like three months ago. And I was like, let people guess whatever they want to go with. 
as long as you expect me to be with a bad bitch. Oh, that's, that's all I'm saying. Okay? That's all I'm saying. Um, but, yeah, I just think Valentine's Day is interesting because there's something about the day that triggers some people. And there's something about the day that also brings out the petty in some people. I don't know. I, I just, I watch it as a, as a social media historian. I'm self-proclaimed social media historian. It's just interesting to me to watch the dynamics, uh, to watch the conversations, the statuses. And I wonder, for those who end up, um, let's say single a month after Valentine's Day, what the performing of love online does when it's time to heal from your relationship. Are you going to be looking at Facebook memories, being like, dang, I shouldn't have posted that? Do the couple's albums go away? Um, Yeah, no, it's interesting. All right, so you know what my spotlight got to be this week. Black Panther. This movie has taken over the world. It's been... Probably the biggest pop culture moment, I'd say, in the last decade. We've been anticipating uh, Black Panther for the last year and a half, and it's finally here, and it has snatched all our edges. I mean, I don't even know where to get started in talking about this film. It's so serious to me that I decided to re-record the segment after seeing it two more times because it's that deep. First of all, Black Panther is history-making. It's made more money than any other Marvel movie in its opening weekend. As of right now, when I'm recording this, it's made $170 million. It's been one of Marvel's most expensive films to date and definitely the most expensive first film in a franchise. And that's saying a lot. It sets a really interesting precedent for the production value of a black film and its revenue-generating monster ability. It's incredible. The money here... Makes sense. One thing about Black Panther, we were all very excited just because it had a black writer, a black director, a mostly black cast. But there's also diversity in the black cast, which is really cool. And every time they mention how the movie lacks diversity, I want to mention like, wait, Chadwick Boseman, Michael B. Jordan, Angela Bassett, Forrest Whitaker, they're all African-American. Then you have Denai Guerrero, who's Zimbabwean-American. Then you have Lupita Nyong'o, who is Kenyan, Mexican, African. Then you have Martin Freeman, Daniel Kaluuya, Andy Serkis, who are English. Then Florence Kasumba is Ugandan, German. Letitia Wright is Guyanese. And it's just showing that there's so much diversity in the diaspora. Like, we're not a monolith. We're all from different places, too. But, I mean, we're all one. So that part is impressive, how they really made it an effort to have a cast that is from all over the diaspora. But this film, y'all, like, watching it made me emotional for a couple of reasons. Um, Black Panther had the audacity to show the power of women, and that's the biggest thing about this film for me. Um, How throughout this film, the Black Panther T'Challa was surrounded by women, and he leans on them constantly and trusts them implicitly. Uh, The character of Okoye, who's the general of the Dora Milaje, the warrior women, she's such a fierce, fierce woman, like principled and strong and just full of integrity. And that character, who was one of the first ones to speak in the film, she commands respect the moment you see her. I mean, the bald head, the just melanin jumping off the screen, but she knows her stuff. She's a strategist. And I loved it. The reverence for women in this film made me cry. It's such a far, um, it's such a difference from how women are typically portrayed. We're the princess who Mario needs to save typically. But in this film, the women save the day multiple times. The women are the ones who are doing the saving. And I just love that the smartest person in the film is a woman, Princess Shuri. God, she's such a geek. And it's dope. Just... As seeing how confident she is in it, seeing being like, yo, brother, I know you got all these tools, but let me upgrade you. And the women were powerful, but also tender and warm at the same time. Like, they weren't women who were emasculating. They weren't women who were, like, just, like, one-dimensional. These women had layers. Again, Okoye, I think, is my favorite character, and there's one scene that I'm not going to give it away. There's one scene in particular, that I want to be 
a poster in my office or in my bedroom um, that just shows the power of love. And this fierce warrior, she still has love. I, I mean, honestly, I'm so excited for little girls to see the women in Black Panther as role models. These women are just, everything about them is amazing. They... But I just really love how the men around them give them honor and reverence. That That's the powerful piece, how they're responded to by the men. Because a lot of times women are like, you know, we can be fierce all day, but we're told that we're too aggressive, we're too angry. These women were loved and cherished and respected. And, I mean, honestly, thinking about it just, whew, that part got me, man, got me. Uh, another part is... Just these characters in, in this in this film are allowed to be tender, even in their strength. Even Black Panther, we saw him cry. Um, it's important to see black men cry because they're not allowed to typically. They're usually just shown as these super aggressive, mm, flat, non-complex beings. And th- this this film had so many complex men. Um, I'm thinking Killmonger, uh, Black Panther himself, even M'Baku. It's just like, man. Whew. And for me, another thing that really mattered, uh, that jumped off the, the screen to me, is Africa as a superpower. As an African myself, I was born in Nigeria, and I came to the U.S. when I was nine. I it, it made so much it made me so proud to see how Africa was was shown as this place because Wakanda is considered the most technologically advanced country on the planet for a continent like Africa that is typically painted as tin huts and poverty and the word savage is used to describe that continent way too often the love and and respect shown for it. The the fact that it's shown as this place of innovation. It's, the, it's a revolutionary portrayal of, of Africa. Um, Wakanda is this place where, I mean, the guy who's American couldn't even fathom it. Couldn't even fathom the technology they had. And, and I just love that this continent is being given this credit and shown in this way. But also... I, before we had, you know, Zamunda. And Zamunda, you know, coming to America was a comedic movie for a reason but this is this was one of the first films i can think of that seriously portrays the continent the motherland as this place of pioneers and just futuristic there's so much afrofuturism in this and i was just like floored but i also loved the fact that they used a lot of african folklore i could tell they did some research with this this was deep i mean and also as African girl, I, I think about how this film can change the way little African kids can see themselves. I remember coming to the U.S. and my accent was different and my name was different and the food I ate was different and it othered me immediately. And I learned how to uh, talk like my classmates by just kind of listening to them and mimicking how they were speaking. And by high school, I had lost most of my accent. Watching this film, the thing that hit me was that there's a little nine-year-old African girl who's going to come to the United States who doesn't feel like she has to change the way she talks because it makes her too different. There's going to be a little seven-year-old African boy who can be like, yeah, I can tell these kids what my name means because it's no longer so foreign that they're going to make fun of it. That's powerful. That's the type of stuff that can change a generation. Because for a lot of us who came when we were younger, we spent half our time trying to hide who we were. And this film changes that. What? I'm like, it just blows my mind. It, It blows my mind. And it's so powerful. And I'm looking forward to the ripple effect that it has in in kids and, and how it makes them change the way they think the world is possible. And, of course, the costumes in Black Panther give me all the life, let me tell you. All the embroidery on the caftans, the the kente robes, the costumes with the Dora Milaje, yo. 
Uh, I'm pretty sure for Halloween, I'm going as a Dora Milaje. I need to come start and go find some red leather right now. That needs to happen. Uh, some gold, some gold rings, and I might shave my head. Look, I'm not against it because those women were fierce. But the costumes were so good. It just everything about it was just beautifully shot. It was like melanin was leaping off the screen in amazing ways. Lupita and Yango's skin. I was distracted a couple of times because I kept on being like, how does this woman have zero wrinkles? What is she bathing in? And can we talk about Angela Bassett? The woman is aging in reverse. I don't understand. Like, I'm just like, did she find some unicorns and, like, bathe in their tears? How is this woman almost 60 years old looking like that? I don't, look, the melanin magic in Black Panther, I was like, look at all this noir pixie dust. Just... It just reflected how beautiful chocolate is. And again, there's a little bl- little black girl and little black boy who are watching this and being like, yo, I look like them, and it's perfectly fine. I'm beautiful just like I am. It's just a feast for my eyes, a feast for my soul. It's like a bomb for my spirit to just see this. It's just beautifully shot, just lit. It's lit, okay? I mean, everything that they did in terms of making sure that this film really did justice to blackness. I cannot underestimate it. I just, speaking of the the layers, yo, there's so many layers to this thing. I'm still thinking it through. And one of the biggest um, threads in here uh, was the relationship between Africans and African Americans. I've written about it before. Man, there's a line at the end that where they said, fools build barriers, the wise build bridges. And this film kind of reminded us that we need to start building more bridges, especially between us, because we are the same. Our skin folk are our kin folk in this. Shout out to Zora Neale Hurston. I think we need to start having the tough conversations. Killmonger and um, T'Challa and, and Black Panther their scenes together were just, I mean, heart-wrenching. It was some of the most beautiful acting I've seen. Just the vulnerability, the the rage, the, the consideration. Out of this whole film, that theme is what jumps out the most to me. And I think we have to start building these bridges, yo, like... And I love that people took this um, premiere as an opportunity to dress up and figure out what Wakanda looks like for them. And it's a starting point. I've seen a lot of pieces about people being like, oh, my God, be careful what you wear. No, it's time for us to start really being like, all right, we're family for real. What can we do to lift each other up? Africans, African-Americans, we all start in the same place. So, you know, let's break bread. Let's start, yes, wear... African clothes, just know, you know, the significance behind it. I don't have a problem with us dressing the same. I think there's so much history that we need to share amongst each other. There's so much, um, there's so much we need to make sure we're like healing amongst each other. And when I walked away from this film, I kept on thinking like, as Africans who were othered, we also have to make sure we're not othering our African-American brothers and sisters in the process of being proud of who we are, we need to just, like, I think we just need to come together more because together we are unstoppable, y'all. We are unstoppable. And I think that's what Wakanda really kind of affirmed. Like, it's like, yo, we're the same, all right? If one of us is burning, if one of us is on fire, all of us were on fire. So we got to start fighting for each other and standing up for each other and being unapologetically black together and do our best to not act like just because some of us got left behind and some of us passed an ocean that one of us is better than the other. Um, Yeah, that this this film is, I'm still thinking through some of the scenes with Killmonger and Black Panther and um, I want to like watch them again, those specifically those scenes. But yeah, above all, too, Black Panther is funny. It has a nerve to be funny. Like, Princess Shuri is hysterical. M'Baku, amazing. That piece where he was like, are you done? That was such a very Nigerian thing for him to say. He was like, are you done? Are you finished? That's one of my favorite parts. Um, 
But yeah, I again, I'm really excited for little black kids to see this. Like the kids from Oakland and from Chicago, from New York, to see this and understand that like this can happen. This can be me. I'm just really, really encouraged that this generation gets to see themselves on a big screen in such a significant way. And they get to see that, like, I can become a scientist. I can, I mean, you might not become Black Panther, but you can become somebody who changes the world with whatever power that they have, whatever that power is. Little, like, I'm just, I'm, I'm, my heart is full by the fact that this film feels like life-affirming, life-changing, life-shifting for black people in a way that cannot be taken back. And it's long overdue, and the success of Black Panther should mean more of these stories will be written and, and produced and distributed on a, on a grand scale. More of these stories of blackness, because blackness is not a monolith, need to be shared to the world. And the possibilities are endless. And if nothing else, Black Panther should show that Black stories are profitable. Black stories are necessary. Black stories are amazing. And we need more of it. More of it all the time. All types of different ones. They won't all look like Black Panther, which is good. They need to be different. But they need to exist. So shout out to Ryan Coogler, who directed it. The, the, the cast of Black Panther killed it. I mean, everything about this film. I'm probably going to see it a third time, and I'm probably going to be hollering also about it. I'm just loving the greatness of Black Panther. All right, so, yeah, Black Panther is my spotlight of the week. Go watch it. Discuss it. Um, yeah, support it. Wakanda forever. My first guest on this podcast is my homie, Unique Jones Gibson. I wanted her to kick things off because she's basically family, which is friends who become family. She's one of the most brilliant people I know, and she's just overall bae. And she's part of my Glow Up Squad, which is a group of us who are currently doing dope things and supporting each other through it. I'm going to give y'all her little bio so you know you can see a taste of the magic. Unique is an award-winning content creator, director, and speaker who develops campaigns that ignite conversation and introspection. Her talent is to get people talking either through her campaigns and the awareness generated by their message or through her role as a speaker, host, or moderator. In 2013, Unique launched Because of Them We Can. Y'all might recognize Because of Them We Can. It's the campaign that started five years ago where kids uh, were basically dressed up as some of the heroes you read about and some you haven't read about. Like, there was a baby Malcolm X, there was a baby Muhammad Ali, there was a baby Shirley Chisholm. Uh, she launched this campaign during Black History Month with a mission to empower the next generation to honor the legacy of their ancestors. And it's been lit since, okay? So I'm excited to have Unique on. Thank you for joining me for the first episode of Rants and Randomness. Thank you for having me on the first episode <laughs> of Rants and Randomness. We all here making history together. Check us out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> So I'm always curious to find out from people, what did you want to be when you were growing up? Oh, man, I wanted to be an actress. Really? Um, yes. And I can't say that I've let that dream go. It's still there. It's just a little dormant. But uh, yeah, I wanted to be an actress. I wanted to be an entertainer on television. I wanted to do something to bring joy to people. And I thought that... Uh, that would be like the best way for me to get my talent and and fun in at the same time. You know TV. that that actually surprises me. That's yeah. super that super surprises me about you actually. That's so funny. I I'm surprised because you so like behind the scenes getting things done that yeah. I wouldn't have thought about you thinking you wanted to be an actress. Yeah, I mean, I've 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 learned to be behind the scenes just because um I've just been figuring things out, right? And so my major was in broadcast journalism when I went to college. And I did a lot when I was on the yard. But uh, when I graduated, I just I actually moved to New York to work in advertising and thought I would have time to audition and do things like that. But that New York hustle was just a different beast, and I never made the time for it. Um, but I did a lot when I was younger. I actually used to, you know, extra in films or little short stories, uh, interactive things, um, 
like webisode, yeah, I, I, that was definitely um the, the goal or the dream, and I uh I, I set it to five. Yeah. So, do you think you want to like make it happen one day? I do. I do. I think it will eventually happen. I think I'm having a lot of fun as a creator. Um, pretty much ideating and coming up with uh whether it's film, whether it's uh these little shorts or long format videos or commercials. I'm having a lot of fun doing that. But I do think that the time will come for me to kind of pop back in front of the camera. I've done it with hosting and speaking, but I do think that that time will come again. Look, I'm excited. I'll be in the front row like, y'all, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's you, do it. You've seen, you've seen the joke time side of me, so you know that, like, I'm all, I always have jokes, but that's just something a lot of people don't know. But that's where that comes from, that whole entertainment thing. You know what's funny? That's actually one of the questions I have about, uh, for you is, like, what is the most common misconception that people have about you or your work? Yeah, so p- people think I'm uh, just super serious, um, which is, uh, as you know, it's just not it's just not true. Um, I am a serious person. I'm a driven person, but I love to have fun. That is like at the foundation of everything that I'm doing. I'm only doing it if I'm able to have fun. And so um, I would say that's a common misconception. A lot of times when people meet me, they're like, oh, oh, you're cool. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I think that is a common misconception. Oh my gosh. So February has been lit for you for the last five years because of, because of the We Can campaign. And I remember when I first saw it, I was like, oh my God, this is the cutest thing ever because those kids actually end up looking like them. Like I remember seeing baby Malcolm X (laughs) and you found a kid who happens to like embody him and look like him. And I was just like, oh, this is the bomb. I want you to talk about. How did you even come up with the idea and how did the the whole thing launch? Yeah, so I was, um, this was around this time, like Instagram was getting kind of hot for like, you know, posts. And I remember I was searching some random hashtag and it was, it was really uh, people like making a mockery of black history in some of the images. So you've seen it. We laugh at them sometimes, like the first person to bounce a check. It was like really like things like that, that were funny. But once you thought about it, it was like, actually, it's not funny because this is what we're talking about when it comes to like our history. And at the same time, I was also, it was also right after um, George Zimmerman had been acquitted for Mm -hmm. Trayvon uh, Mm -hmm. murder. Mm -hmm. And I was just very frustrated with the narrative surrounding black people. I just thought it was wrong and there wasn't enough positivity or enough light on just how dope we are and all of the things that we have accomplished. And so in that vein, literally like a couple of days before Black History Month, I was watching my son Chase shadow box and as i was watching him i was like oh man he's shadow box and he needs to know about muhammad ali and i was like wow how would i teach him about muhammad ali and i was like oh maybe it'd be cool to dress him up as muhammad ali and i kind of just went down that like rabbit hole and i started to think about other kids that i knew who just so happened to look like these trailblazers and so i called up a kid that i thought looked like frederick douglas because he had the big oh my god that one was so good by the way (laughs) right Right. Yeah, so I just started calling people little Rosa Parks. Like, I called the parents and was like, hey, it's me. I need to borrow your kid for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to, you know, have their hair this way or don't worry about clothing. And they just all just so happened to trust me. And, yeah, launched it. And it, um, it went super viral. And, uh, yeah, that, that's, just, that's just how it all came about. And it grew from there. And I really saw it as an opportunity to kind of just quit my job and uh, and keep it going. And, and here we are five years later. And at that point, what were you working? Like, what were you doing? Yeah, I was running online. I've worked in the online advertising industry since 2007. Like, uh, and so I was working at a company called Custom Inc. Thanks, Custom Inc. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. I was running their um, online advertising and social media. Um, that's what I was doing. And uh, it was cool. I loved my job. But... You know how it is sometimes when you aren't able to get your ideas out your head. I kept hitting walls like that. And so I started to create on the weekends. And that's how campaigns like I'm Trayvon Martin and Because of the Weekend came about. How how did that campaign change your life? Because of the Weekend? Yeah. Um, yeah, it really helped me, it led me to understand that um, a, a, a lot. It's changing my life daily. Um, but it really helped me to understand uh, faith. Um, and to understand that it's uh, it's bigger than me, right? Mm-hmm. Because when we can, it's not about, it started with my kids, it started with me being frustrated and wanted to give them some tools and resources to help them understand their potential. But it really grew beyond the four walls of my home to 
everybody, like everybody's kids, like everybody needs to know this message. Um, we all need to know how dope we are, not just black people, but you know, other races too, so that we can really just enlighten folks and let them know um, just how amazing we are, because we are. And so it, it helped me to understand it's bigger than me, because there were days where I was like, ooh, look at my bank account. Um, yep, yep, the struggle you know, is real. The struggle is real, but really just kept going because I didn't think that I could afford not to put this energy into the universe. Um, and it also helped me understand faith because I, I quit my job, right? I, I left my job to pursue this full time. And, um, you know, I've been good and things are just growing and it's expanding. And um, the, the goal is always to just keep leveling up and, and making sure that we're doing things that the people not only want, but the people need. Yo, and I think it's super necessary because five years still, nothing is, exists like it. And so I I was, I think I, I was a super fan of the campaign before I met you. Mm-hmm. And I remember just being like, this is just brilliant. I am just a fan of people filling in the gap. And you found a gap and you filled it. And people rose up to the occasion because being like, oh my God, the way people responded to it let you know how much of a gap there was. Yeah, yeah, no, people were very responsive um, and, and still are, right? Um, and it, and it's, it's very humbling, but it's also reassuring. And you realize, like, wow, how can we create not just, you know, we started off with static images and went from static images to videos and to um, just positive news stories every day when it comes to, like, black excellence, just nothing but positivity. There are sites that post other things, and, you know, those are some sites that I, that I frequent and, 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 I, and I read, but that's just not what, because when we can, platform is for That's the place where you go where you need, like, an escape from all of that so that you can just, you know, take a moment, like, oh, okay, the first whatever just, you know, made history over in Alabama, or, oh, okay, let me see, um, let me see some, some dope stuff that some, uh, some young person in Texas did. Like, that's the place where you can go, or if you just, want to see some little kids reimagined as um, CNN correspondents, and you want to see how the news sh- could feel if it was run by some little four-year-old. <laughs> um, yeah. Yo, I want people to go check out the video um, on Because of Them We Can. You can go to at Because of Them uh, Instagram, the one you did this February, <laughs> this month, where you um, had baby Don Lemon and Angela Rye, Simone Sanders, Bakari Sellers. Uh, it is the cutest. I watched that video at least 15 times <laughs> that day alone when it dropped. Because the little Don Lemon being like, happy Black History Month. I almost died from the cutes. I almost died. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, little Carter was doing his thing. He's four years old. And uh, when we dropped it, his mom was like, oh, he did so good for a four-year-old. And I'm like, no, he did good, period. He did good, um, period. Yes. But period. And you'd be surprised. A lot of these kids take on these personas and they end up like admiring and trying to honor the individuals that they're channeling. And so I'm pretty sure I would be interested to see what, what Carter decides to do in 10, 15 years when he's charting out his career path. I wouldn't be shocked if it was something in journalism. But, uh, yeah, he's super cute. All the kids were amazing. My favorite, all of them were my favorite, but my ultimate April favorite Ryan. Was, yeah, April Ryan. Baby April? <laughs> her, her, how you saw her in the video was how she was. Like, that was no coaching. She was like, why am I here? Um, she was... <laughs> She was giving it up the whole time. Um, yeah, I, I love that little girl. She was amazing. Everybody was, but that's my favorite. So yesterday, I saw that a little girl that you had cast three years ago to play Alexa Kennedy then decided to dress up as you for Black History Month. Girl, I almost cried. Yeah, so um, this little girl, her name is Zahara. She has sickle cell, and um, I cast her as Alexa Kennedy maybe like, that was five years ago. Yeah, five years ago. And um, she, uh, I followed her story through, like, social media. Like, I know her mother. So, I like, I know she's in the hospital, if, like, every week, right, just getting tested and getting things done. So, somebody that I just love that little girl. And, yes, her mother had texted me this week and was like, hey, Zahara's doing her Black History Month project on you. And so, all right, oh. I, was like, I was like, oh, my gosh, that's so sweet. She was like, she needs to ask you some questions. So, we corresponded via text. And that was it, right? I was good off of that. I was like, oh, that's sweet. She's on her Black History Month project on me. Girl, when I saw the picture on Facebook of her uh, dressed up at me, the I best. lost it. The uh, best. 
I lost it. I, I yeah, this is water work because I, I don't think about um, how little kids or how people view me, right? I look, I think about how they view my work and um, the impact that I'm trying to make, but this has been the first time in four years where I've been able to stop and process things in the moment and um, and really just enjoy things in the moment. And yeah, that, that stood me over the edge. So I had to pop up at her school on her presentation, just like give her a hug to say thank you because it, it really touched me. It was amazing. And I think a lot of times as we do the work that we do, and even though we hear the, you know, we see the numbers of like, oh, this is how many people liked it. We don't often hear the stories of the impact that our actual work is making. So those times, we do have to pause and be like, all right, all those hard nights and all the investment that we made, it was worth it. Yeah, and it's hard to pause, love you. Like, pausing is, I think I'm, Girl, don't I know it. It's tough, right? Because it's like, all right, did that, now, I'm, now what's next? Like, yep. what else do I have to take care of? Or don't let something go wrong, then I think we spend a lot of time on the negative. And so... Yeah, like, just stopping for a moment to say, like, wow, that was a win, like, that was good, and appreciating it in the moment is, is, is something that I'm realizing is just so important. You know, um, I'm terrible at pausing. You know, we all are. But one thing that has made me start pausing more is just, like, the love of my village, and you're a part of it. Like, when yeah. something happens that I just, like, randomly share, and y'all will be like, oh, my God, that's dope. And I'll be like, oh, that is dope. Thank you for making me process that. And we do the same for each other. And mm-hmm. speaking of the village, you um, you value the village. And you just started something called the Dream Village, which is funny that it's launched um, February 10th. But I remember you mentioning it to me when it was an idea. That's yeah. nuts. Talk about Dream Village. Yeah, so I think I hit you up, like, right after I, I bought the domain name because I was – wilding out over what I spent to get the domain name. And I was like, oh, this is a mistake. And you were like, that's going to be the best money you ever spent. Sure did. Um, I remember. I remember that conversation. I was like, that's go- you, I was like you're going to get that money back. Infinity, okay? Exactly. So, yeah, um, the, you know, the last five years that I've been on this journey, um, I can see uh, my success, and I can also see some of my challenges and failures. And I started to really just identify what the gaps were in it was that, you know, I had a village around me, but I really wasn't tapping into my village. So I really wasn't talking to my village. I really wasn't leveraging my village, being open with my village to just say like, hey, I'm going through this or, hey, I need I need some help or can you give me your opinion on X, Y, and Z? Um, and so it started off with me just thinking personally like, wow, I wonder if I would have been in this predicament or if that would have happened had my village been around or had I really tapped into the people who I know care about me beyond a transaction. Mm -hmm. And that thought grew and it really helped me to start looking at a lot of the people that I had encountered over the years who had all these amazing dreams, lovey, but I realized they had all these questions and the questions really drilled down to like support, right? So you go to these amazing conferences, you go to these workshops, when you go home, like what sustains your dream or who are you tapping into or working with to really just help you keep things going. And so I realized that while there's no shortage of dreams or ideas or goals, what happens is uh, oftentimes we're missing our village. Yeah. Um, and know that, uh, you know, old African proverb is like, it takes a village. And while it says it takes a village to raise a child, we also know that it takes a village to raise a dream. Yes. And so, what I wanted to do was create Dream Village so that people could have a space uh, beyond a co-working space, right, a community space, a space where they could go to work on their dreams, their ideas, and their goals, but also to work on their village, their community, their family, like the people that will support and sustain them. And so it is a space where, just like you and I, like my success is your success. When I see you do something as those, I'm celebrating as if it's me. But at the same time, if I see you fall, I'm like, Dad, well, how did that happen? How do we fix that? Like, right. how do we make sure that doesn't happen again? And so it is an extension of the group chat. It is, it is an extension of um, our, our, our conversations amongst our friends and really just providing a space where other people can leverage and can tap into that same energy and environment. Word. And I'm and it just opened. You just did the ribbon cutting on February 10th in Hyattsville, Maryland. Yeah, so, and I keep saying, like, this will be like, you know, like the, the fast food locations where you're like, oh, this is, this is the first Chick-fil-A, this is the first McDonald's, like, this is the first 
drain filling. And, and we're already looking at more. But yes, it's in Hydeville, Maryland. We just did the ribbon cutting. And, and um, there's going to be a physical aspect where people in the lo the areas can come around. But also there's going to be a virtual um, membership, too, where people all over the country or world will also be able to tap into Dream Village online in a private community that's separate from any social media platform or, or, or network. So how like what's the website where people can go check out information about Dream Village and sign up for the newsletter? Yeah, dreamvillage.com. So go on there, sign up for the newsletter, sign up for updates, and uh, it's, it's going to be really exciting what, what we do and, and what we put into the universe. I'm hoping everybody listening will tap in and eventually become a, a, a part of Dream Village. Yes. So my final question for you is, like, I'm really into us doing things to take care of ourselves as we do this glow up and elevation thing and climb ladders and whatever and take over the world. So, like, what are you doing to take care of yourself as you're doing all this stuff? Oh, love you. That's so good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Getting you together. You know, I be we be trying to get each other together. Like, um, have you been to the spa lately, ma'am? <laughs> oh, man. Um, so... Full transparency, like that's a, that's still a, a big weakness of mine. Um, I just posted about it on Instagram. Uh, you know how thankful I am for my husband because that's the dude that fills in those gaps for me. But I'm working on it. I was and I was just with you not too long ago, and I think we had been out like all day, and it was like six or seven. No, it was later, and I was like, Dad, all I ate today was some crackers. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> I was like, damn, I forgot to eat today. Um, but I'm working on it. You know, part of that is is really surrounding myself with like people who know what my weaknesses are, and that's a big one, right? Like, I forget to eat, I forget to drink water. Like, it's bad. But I'm working on it. Um, and so, how I'm working on it, putting people, <laughs> being honest with my with my village on uh, what my weakness is in that respect, so that I can um, stay healthy and stay around. But uh. Ask me that question in six months, and I'll say, you know, I've done this and I've done that. You know but what? I, I, right, I don't have. Um, I'm working on it. I'm. I'm really. I'm really working on it. Uh, I'm working on figuring out like how to, you know, just make sure that I, I'm sustaining myself. The good thing is I'm, I'm vegan now, so that's a little bit right. I'm eating better. Um, but the the, the spa and all of that, I, I gotta make time. You know what? I, I'm gonna add that to my list of assignments. Like in in our group thread, we need to make sure we checking in once a week on some like, all right, I know you're doing dope stuff, but what are you actually doing? to like refill your batteries. So I'm a I'ma make sure I'm doing some check ins on that because I thought I was I was like, oh no, oh no. Mm -mm. You doing oh, a spot. No. All the way together. Oh no, we're gonna get you together. No ma'am, we're not gonna do this. <laughs> Cause I think that's just as important that we like whole and emotionally well and not running ourselves into walls because we good for that. So yeah. no, as always I am super proud of you. You are one of the dopest people I know, and I am always cheering you on. Dream Village is going to soar. It's already soaring. I can't wait until you got, like, 20 of them, which means you're going to have to get leave, give up some control. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> the type A, and you just went, oh, God, no. <laughs> Type A, all the way. <laughs> all the way. Look, listen, you're talking to another Type A. That's why we got issues now. I'm like, we don't know how to let go of control. We're going to work on it. We're going to work on it. We're working on it. You got me my assistant, so thank you. We're yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. I was like, why do you not have an assistant in the year of our Lord 2018? We're going to fix this. We're not <laughs> going to do this. Pick me together. Thank Get you. Pick <laughs> <laughs> together. Don't blame me. Lord. <laughs> Love you much. Thank you so much for being my first guest. That means a lot. Thank you and congratulations. What you're doing is amazing. And um, I'm, I'm happy to see you taking this next step to ex expand your platform even more. Thank, Thank you, you. ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Just out here trying to do the things. You know, all the things. <laughs> I right, see you in the group chat. All right. <laughs> Yo, so, see, this is why Unique is so amazing and dope. She's just inspiring her work ethic and her grind and her heart. And that's why she's part of the Glow Up Squad. So you want to make sure you follow her on social media. Unique is everywhere at UniqueJG. And that's E-U-N-I-Q-U-E-J-G on both Twitter and Instagram. And much love to Chicago Recording Company and Sav Media for partnering with me on this podcast, Rants and Randomness. Uh, now, one thing, we got to do housekeeping because you know. Before you leave, 
please subscribe to Rant and Randomness on Apple Podcasts. I'm not too proud to beg, okay? And rate it. I need you to do that. Show us some love. And as always, you can find me on social media at Lovey, L-U-V-V-I-E, everywhere you want to be. That's been episode one of Rant Randomness. See you on the next one.